Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am going to make a junk journal with a rounded spine. It's sturdy, but it's flexible and it allows you, it's got quite a bit of room to grow in it. So, and I'm using fabric because I found a whole lot of fabric I've had. Now, I made 10 because I wanted to just make sure that I was getting it right. Okay, so I've cut my fabric and what I need to do now is stick it onto the card. What I'm going to do is I've got my chipboard here. I happen to know it's A4 and that's the size I'm going to go for. And I need to make a spine. So I'm thinking of making my, I don't, about a quarter of what this is. It's 21, so maybe about five centimetres and then what we're going to do is I have this and it's an inch wide and I thought with it being A4 that's probably a good distance to have this So, about there, for this size of journal, I really want an A2 size bit of paper, fabric. Not quite A2, but there are thereabouts. Obviously, just adapt this for A5, A6, whatever size. My journals all ended up different sizes because I just based it on the size of the card that I had. So there was variations. As long as these three are the same, that's all that matters. I'm actually going to put gesso on these to try and hide the grey. I don't think it will show through the stripy material, but I think it might show through the this material. Okay, so that's these. So I'll probably give them about 20 minutes to dry, turn them over, repeat on the other side, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, these look dry enough to flip them over. See, that there's maybe still a wee bit wet. There's a bit more of a shine on that one. That one's quite matte. So I'm just going to repeat that whole process on the other side. So I'm going to take board number one. And I'm going to cover it in Mod Podge. No, one side of it. Oh, what a disaster. Okay. Right, I have a stripe of material. So, I need to line this up first of all. This makes my job easier, but also it makes it a little bit If you get it wrong, it's going to look very awkward right away. Where are you? Next, I'm going to do this little strip. That definitely worked out okay. Do you know why? Because I've got a nice even line here with that stripe. So next thing we need to do is put some weight on top of this and let it just dry. I'm probably going to let it dry for about 15-20 minutes. Mod Podge does dry pretty fast but at the same time we are going on to fabric so I would rather I just feel if, if I rush this part just now then I could 
could end up paying for it later on. So I'm off to find another couple of heavy books. I think it's been about 10 minutes. It's dry enough. So now I'm going to trim this. I'm just using these pink and shears mainly because I like the edge. So I'm leaving about a centimetre or so. I'm leaving enough for me to easily bend, bend it over to this side of the journal. But removing enough to sort of reduce bulk. Do you know, I'm wondering if A4 is a bit big, but the reason I chose it is because I want to be able to put my jelly prints in some of the pages. So I just took that corner off there so that when we fold it up, it's still joined, but we've not got a big sticky out area, I suppose. And I'm just doing, cutting two wee lines here for round the spine. So I'm doing these sides first. Mainly because it's the easiest. Now, a bone folder is handy here. You want to pull it right up around that, that corner of the page, not corner the edge of the chipboard there. and then I'm going to repeat at the far away side so again you want to make sure you've got a nice neat edge here and I'm going to just go over the top like I did before. So see the corner here? I'm really trying to get that pushed in.
So for the corners, it's just about having, minimising the bulk by how you're cutting the edge, just leaving the tiniest wee bit here and sort of almost like you're snipping off a, a corner from the triangle, a triangle from the corner. Look at that. I'm quite pleased. I've got fluff everywhere. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do this here, the top of the spine. Just keep an eye on the corners, make sure they're just while they're still wet. Yeah. Do a little bit pulling away there. I give it an opportunity to really stick down, so we'll give it half an hour. But look. So that's been a good half an hour and it's I mean, it's certainly dry enough to touch. And you can see it's, it's gone transparent. That's the spine. That's the back. So, we're going to need to put our signatures in. We're going to need to put our topper on. And I want to put all the lace around as well. I think I'll do the lace first. That'll be lovely. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do what I did with this. Put some Mod Podge on. Okay, that's me put the lace on both sides. I do need to be careful with it because until that Mod Podge starts to dry, it is a bit likely to come off. And all I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do it like that so that I can then kind of round it a bit more. So I'm going to wait for it to dry and then make a decision about how I want to manage this lace. Okay. There was it. So I've cut a piece out of this. I don't know if it's silk or what it is. Um, I think it's... I don't know. It's something fragile and posh anyway. And what I've done is I've cut this out and I've kind of threaded it a bit, so oh, it's not... I feel like I'm going to pull the whole thing apart. There's one there. You just kind of get the loose edges, loose threads and... Get 
to my little pool. Okay. So, lace is dry. Before we do the inside, I want to put this on. Here. They're not my ideal colour of Brad, but now I need to remember that I'm going to have some of that other fabric about there. I think I'll put it here. Of course, it's a bit slanty. Never mind. We'll tidy that up with some artful placement. So, we have our brads in, which is good. Where's my masking? That I'm going to put this on. have this do you see that edge I want to try and loosen up the threads on this to achieve a similar effect So now I'm just going to try and pull the threads Come on What I'm going to do is just pull some out of each side and then it's an error. I think there's a pattern in there that's maybe Okay, so I found this thread unpicker, which actually is making the job a lot easier because I can catch one and then give it a pull. I used to do this to my cut off denims. Okay, so there we go. I've just, I've not made it, oh, even though I could have sat and threaded that all night. I've not made it too big. Do I want to do more here? It's actually harder to do these sides than it is to do the sides there. obviously the direction of the thread thread right let's do this I 
I'm not sure what's the right way to go as well with the design. What I do is I push the kind of excess into the these gaps that were in here be between the spine and the front and back covers. So what I'm doing now is making signatures for the journal. So this is A3 children's drawing paper. It's very thin. It's thinner than printer paper. Um, that's fine. So I'm using watercolours and I've just got two left to do so I thought I would um, do them with you. So when I first started doing them to begin with, they were very, I was being very faint, so they were um, coming out very light, as if they'd hardly been touched. So then I went a bit darker and I went a bit too dark, but what I found is the further up, that's another thing, wet the paper first, because if not you'll get brush strokes like that, which is fine. But, you know, I, I want them to look just a bit more natural and have, you know, it's more like the drips and the way it goes into the water. It's those marks that I'm wanting. But I found as I progressed that I preferred the way it was looking. Just going to add a bit more water. Now, when you're drying them, because this paper is quite fragile, I find that if I pick it up and it folds over in itself... I just leave it like that because what's happening is it tears whereas when it starts to dry it's it's much easier to just pull it back I've kind of been going around the outside with maybe just a slightly more darker color and I'm just doing one side at a time So when I pick this up, if it was to be, um, you know, if it was to fold over in itself like that, I would just leave it that way. <laughs> That's, I'm trying to say. I think as well, the, far, the more you progress, you're starting to get all these different colours in here, which helps just add to that more muted 
effect. So I'm using, mostly using this Art Nouveau set from Ganzai Tambay. Let's put a bit of sparkle on this one from the white gold and the normal Kurataki Ganzai Tambay one. And it's got a few shades of this brick. I find the colours in it are perfect for junk journals. That's what I'm trying to say in a really roundabout way. I've, all, I've went a wee bit overboard in the pink now though. And I'm using the biggest brush I have. Okay, so that's the first one. Still damp, but it's much less fragile. And what I do is I just place the back down onto the... I've got freezer paper underneath so that the water will stay... You know, the drips will stay on the freezer paper rather than soaking into another surface. I've got too much blue, but I like this blue because I've got a bit of blue on the little teal or whatever it is. See there? That wasn't wet enough and I've got brush marks. That's okay. Just kind of going round the page like it's a vignette of ageing. There we go. Okay, so I'll do the other one. We'll put these to dry and then when we're dry, I'll come back. Okay, so before I clear up, I'm thinking I've got these other pages. I might as well just mop up. this with them okay so i've made three signatures i do need to cut them down a bit so they're all the same but different pictures obviously so the first one is from a pep and press batik book so it's lovely patterns then it's a watercolored page then it's a bygone britain book of adverts Then it's a writing page. Then it's a music page. This is old. I don't know. I threw out the cover. Can't tell you. <laughs> Other watercolour page. Kids fairy tale book. Watercolour page. Victorian ladies book. And watercolour page in the middle. Now I thought about making all pockets and tucks. But see to be honest with you. I'm thinking. I like adding those things in. So. Our cover has dried overnight. I've had a bit of a boob here, but we'll ignore that. Oh, it's quite bad. Right, I'm going to need to put something decorative here to just hide that bit. Now, what I've done with the lace is I decided I liked that kind of corner where it wasn't there because I felt it was more untidy here. So all I did was kind of cut this one up to the corner in a diagonal and then this one now I feel to go to there is a bit much so I'm going to go to the peak of the curve and that's it this is our book so got a slight if you look here there's a slight gathering right there but see, to be honest with you, overall, it's sturdy. It's not going to come apart. 
I'll probably just put a bit more glue on there and try and push it into there a bit more. But I'm thinking of not putting sewing around it. Now, I'm liking this. I think this finished off that edge so nice, which is normally what we use the sewing for. And apart from here, where I've got a bit of the actual material overhanging everywhere else, it just looks so really nice and finished. Just peeking out from behind with the lace. So I'm thinking that we're... I'm not saying finally we're not doing it, but I'm thinking I'm going to not do it. Anyway, we've got our signatures. I'm going to use this one at the front, just to be in keeping with the kind of... cut. I feel like overall, that's the colour that suits the book best. So... But we'll just do this. So we've got a bit of overhang out of the book. Now, what I liked about this one was the book, the pages were shorter, shorter on both vertically and horizontally to the book. Which means that when I round it, I've got room so that when this grows more, it will do that more than that. That's the idea anyway. So I'm going to cut these down to a better size. Okay, so I've cut them down and then I'm just putting them together for the... Putting them into the journal. So basically, I'm putting some paper clips on each side so that it stays in place, doesn't move about, and it just makes it easier for the putting the thread through. Okay, so I just lined it up with my dots and marked where I want to poke these holes. I've got a bit of material that I've bunched up together because it's a lot easier to poke the hole with the all when you're actually got something to push it into. Okay, so I've got two of the signatures put in and what I've done is I'm actually putting thought about leaving the strings on this side but I'm putting them on the outside because I'm going to cover this up so I've put in the, I put in the middle signature first wherever you are here I did this first because it's the middle that's upside down so I could get this design at the front then this one and then I'm going to put in the last one with my waxed thread. Then back through any of the holes. I'm going to pull some more thread through at this point.
back through the middle one. This is just, it's a wee bit trickier here. And I just like to go back in and check. I want it tight, but I don't want it so tight that it's pulling on the holes. String on each side. Oh, sure I've got a hole. And then I'm just going to give it two knots because I don't want a lot of bulk. Oops, that's a bit <laughs> big. And then when I put the glue on to glue on my spine fabric, I'll probably put them on. And I'll find a place to put them. So this is the fabric for my spine. Now when I did it before, I used the pinking shears. But I'm wondering if I can actually, I might try and remove threads like I did in the inside one. So I'll probably cover this light brown but keep some of the brown edge. Like so. So this is the middle here then, if I go by this. I just want to see what it look like on the other side. Try and get like a bit less. Um, no, we'll just need to deal with it because to keep some of that blue on show is just a bit too on the edge. I'm sure there must be an easier and faster way to do this. sort of make this shedded side a bit too tall but it's okay. Do you know what maybe it'll shed some of its excess strings in time just made um, a very simple journal topper just to keep in with the theme of the journal so as you can see there it's very easy to round it, which is going to give us room for growth. There's also room to add a lot more signatures if you wanted to. But my plan is, my next step here is, a lot of this is, you know, I'm going to add a lot to this, like this could be a lot of ephemera, like a big pocket, you know, that I can, that'll decorate up and I'll add ephemera to, etc. I'm, I will do something to some of these pages, but a lot of them are the kind of writing pages. Again, really a lot of these are just for starting. They're just starting points. It's a nice bright page, isn't it? I've got my Victorian ladies in here. I do like the Victorian ladies. 
I like how they look at each other with disdain. Look at this. So, I'm not going to flip through all three signatures because they do repeat themselves as in they're pulled from the same books and it's all the watercolour signature pages for writing on. So, I'm considering about if I want to add anything to the covers, but see, I like... I need to add a bit more glue to this. I like the simplicity of where it's at just now. So I think that this, apart from the fact that I've gotten it a bit dirty, right? Apart from that, I, I, I feel that like that is a massive feature of the journal. And I've got enough pages here that I can go to town with embellishments. I also want to use, I have a whole pack of these. I need to try and cut out the actual curtain hook bit, but then I'm left with a clip. And I think I'm going to make these, this hardware, a feature in the journal. I'm also going to look online for some hardware to put on the cover as well. But that's us, a massive A4. Oh, and I am going to be putting some of my jelly prints in. I need to, when I've glued that on, I haven't pressed hard enough, but it's simple enough to just add to again. Oh, and the other thing is, you know how I left the gap? So the gaps for the rolling. And also, we've got a lovely flat journal for working in. Wait till you see the state of this by the time I'm finished with it. We'll probably need to put pockets on it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. So like I say, I'm going to get this all decorated up. All the ephemera in it and then we'll do a flip through. Or maybe we can put some ephemera in it together. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.